once a wren, always a wren. And you can go into a place and you meet a total stranger and you find out she's a wren, you've formed an association right then and there. My name is Janet Hester Watt. I was born in Onaway, Alberta. And it was while I was in Vancouver then in 1945, I joined the Women's Royal Canadian Naval Service, otherwise known as Wrens. My parents, when I came home and uh, said that I had joined the Navy, they weren't surprised. I think they felt alone. It was just a matter of time. And uh, so they were very supportive. So that was four of us then in the Navy, my two brothers and my sister Jean and I. This is when we were on basic training in uh, HMCS uh, Conestoga. And uh, this is the, uh, the gash wagon. And we had to go and pick up the garbage and dump it in there. What I found the hardest, first of all, was taking orders. Your orders were just shouted at you, and you know you had no way of coming back. We were sent then to uh, shovel snow, and then after that we went for our flu uh, shots you know, on each arm. So then we were told to uh, soak our arms in hot water, have a good hot bath, and go to bed early. Well, next day, most of us could hardly move our arms, <laughs> but uh, you keep going. When we were sent to scrub floors, well, we scrubbed floors like we really meant it. Well, then we'd move on, and then another group of friends would come along, and they scrubbed the same floor we had just scrubbed. So <laughs> we learned just skim it off and keep going. When I first joined, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I thought I'd do the same as my sister Jean and go for a, an SBA, a sixth birth attendant. And then they phoned one day and said that there was a new category being introduced as uh, dental assisting and wonder if I'd like to do that, so that delighted me. This is Elizabeth Robertson. I'm the miller, Janet Watt. And then this is Mary Robertson from Winnipeg. We were the last draft of range to be trained, and we were this new category of dental assistants. We did just simple chair assisting, like uh, putting on the bib and uh, um, handing the uh, instruments to the dentist and uh, mixing the fillings and uh, so that was our main job. Yeah. I am this one right on the end. Yeah. See we were housed with the army girls at Harvard and St. George and then every day paraded to the dental clinic. And the very first day that we were there the, the dentist chose me to be a patient and uh, I was rather nervous but he was delighted that I was nervous. <laughs> He's discovered I could have a filling. And then he uh, started to uh, the anesthetic, and I started to faint. The ammonia capsule is so big, and then just press it gently, and it pops, and you just waft it back and forth under the person's nose. Well, the little girl, the young girl, <laughs> had, she was trying to bang it on the edge of the sink to break it. <laughs> Think about this way. Well, and I get farther and farther fainting. <laughs> But everything was going wrong and he was so happy because his very first day of, uh, of teaching us. <laughs> and those dentists were awfully nice. My goodness, they were patient with, with, with us and they were really nice. Yeah, They gave us really good training. At the end of the course, we were sent to various stations and 70, 18 of us were sent to HMCS Cornwallis. Cornwallis was newly built and was the largest base uh, in, in the British Empire. There were about 20 dentists. Their assistants up to that time had been uh, men, and then the Wrens took over. A lot of people, I think, it's the first time they'd ever been in a dentist, and most people have a terror of dentists. Most people we saw were on their way either to be going on board ship or coming back off board ship ready for uh, demobilization. So our per first patient, I don't think he'd ever been to a dentist before in his life. And he was about uh, 17 and a half years old. Finally, it was time to uh, shut off the water. Well, next thing I knew, what did I do? Instead of shutting it off, I turned it on full blast. And this piece of hole shot out of my hand, and it drains that poor fellow from head to toe. <laughs> well, that was fine. We got him uh, mopped up. And I heard this awful crash. Looked over in there, the chair had collapsed. And there was our patient on the floor. So we got him picked up and the chair put back together. Gave him a chip to come back in a few days' time to have the sutures removed. We never saw him again. He was going down that gangway. No Olympian could have ever caught up to him. 
I never once had any problem with being a, a, a female in the Navy. The men generally treated us very, with great deal of respect. Never once had any sort of insult or innuendo that a uh, woman in the Navy, no. They, they were very, very kind to us. And one thing about it, there were about 10,000 men and only about uh, 7,000 uh, women. And there was never such a thing as a wallflower at a dance. Cornwallis was a very large base and it was wonderful. It had uh, three swimming pools and it had bowling alleys. And uh, I learned to bowl while I was there. Dancing, there was always a dance somewhere. And movies, it was a very good movie house. When you went shopping, uh, you, you tore this off and then the storekeeper kept that and then they could turn it in to get, uh, say, suppose you bought sugar. They would turn those into the warehouses to get the, their rations. And uh, I don't know what this one there, they were for tea, tea and sugar. I don't remember if it was coffee, but I know sugar was one of the main ones, yeah. At one minute after midnight tonight, Tuesday the 8th of May, we may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. I had the day off from uh, the dental clinic and so I was uh, catching up on my rest. So then they called out a call for people to make sandwiches. So I decided, well, I'd go and help make sandwiches. For the whole afternoon, I buttered two slices of bread, passed them over, two slices of bread, pass it over, two slices of bread, pass it over. And uh, so then in the evening, the, the place was crowded. We had it was held in the drill shed. So as we were at the dance, there was a young sailor, kind of was for whatever, kind of moving up his way to uh, ask me to dance. And these two men stood in front of me and gently encouraged him to go in another direction. And then my brother Gordon turns to me and he says to me, darn you, Janet, don't do that again. And I said, what did I do? He said, you looked at him. <laughs> and I thought, oh, these protective brothers. <laughs> well, after the war, I went back to my original job. Uh, I considered uh, going into dental work. I really enjoyed the dental work, but uh, my old job paid better than uh, dental work. Now, I worked for H.G. Heinz Company, one of the 57 varieties, you know, ketchup, soup. <clears throat> and each employee, Heinz employee, who came back to work at Heinz following the war, where was given one of these lighters uh, signed by Mr. H.J. Heinz II. Well, I found it a little difficult at first. Uh, you know, you get used to the routine and uh, you have to make up your mind each day when you're in civilian life what you're going to wear. Of course, in the Navy, you knew what you're going to put on. I was the chatterbox at home, but out in public, I was the shy one backed up against the wall. So this brought me out of my shell a lot. Uh, just being there and uh, wearing that uniform and uh, getting used to being ordered. <laughs> I, I found it very helpful for me.